learn how to create, sustain, and scale up your print-on-demand business with the latest tips, guides, and strategies to help you start selling and making money today. Welcome to the Sales on Demand Show, and here's your host, Adam Schneider. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Sales on Demand Show, episode 44. Today, we are going to be talking about customer service. So it is the, what is it, the 5th of December, 6th of December, something like that. You probably will be listening to this within the next few days, and this is it. This is it, man. This is the good times. You should be seeing basically the start of Christmas shopping. And to be perfectly honest with you, it's a very short period of time. We really only have like a week and a half left of this like really maximal selling period. So if you haven't already been doing it, make sure that you are launching your listings still on an ongoing basis. There is no time of the year that you are more likely to make a sale on a new listing than right now. Um, I'm seeing it. I'm I'm making listings and posting them up. I'm only doing about one or two a day because I'm just too busy to do anything else. But uh, they are selling, and and sometimes they'll sell, you know, an hour after they're posted. So it's fantastic. So um, in terms of how I'm doing, uh, working on my third cold of the year. Thank you very much. Trying for a world record on number of colds that I can experience here. And uh, the weather is decent, I guess. It's now kind of sort of winter in Canada, I guess. <laughs> Did it ever stop being winter in Canada? I don't know. Uh, but overall, we're just kind of getting ready for Christmas. And uh, you know, work is busy. And I just started my first night as a reservist in the Canadian Forces. So that's fun. I got to pull out my old uniform and try to fit it on. It still fits, mostly. <laughs> uh, the boots are a little tight. I don't know if my feet got fat or something. Must just be the uh, the big bones in my feet. So I did want to talk about customer service today, but before I do, I wanted to share something with you guys. So as you probably know, you've probably heard a few podcasts and you know that I am a libertarian. I I care about the ability of people to make free and unregulated decisions in and amongst each other. Now, you might be thinking, oh, a member of the military is a libertarian. Look, I voluntarily joined the military, and, uh, you know, I want to defend the country. I have no interest in crossing overseas to... You know, be aggressive. Most Canadians feel that same way, including Canadians in the military. You know, Canada is not very much like the U.S. in that we're, you know, we have aggressive people driving foreign intervention. We're very hands-off most of the time, and uh, I feel that that's not a conflict. But in terms of business, um, the upcoming election is going to be a hotly contested one. Because everybody hates Donald Trump. Well, not everybody. There are some people who worship Donald Trump. And that's also bad. Um, Donald Trump was a reaction to basically a trend where, uh, basically, I don't know. It's hard to say what Donald Trump was, but he's the symptom of a problem. He's not the problem. And uh, back in 2008, people who believed in liberty you know, and wanted to to have people allowed to go and start their own businesses and not have to give, you know, 90% of the profit that they make from those businesses, those people were called libertarians. And they were following a guy named Ron Paul. And nowhere in history has liberty ever been quite as popular as in 2008. So the Libertarian Party, which Ron Paul was not part of, has now... Uh, become a strong force in the United States. And, you know, even though I'm Canadian, I still support that Libertarian Party. I'm friends with a lot of people who are 
working within that party, and we should support them. And I'll tell you, it's, it's in our best interest to support liberty and freedom, because if the Democrats get their way, there's going to be massive, massive taxes put on every single person who is actually producing any value. The people who produce in this country and then this continent are going to be paying for the people who don't produce. We're going to be supporting massive government programs like the, the, the health care plan that Elizabeth Warren has literally doubles the national budget, which is insane considering that the U.S. federal government is already running a $1 trillion a year deficit. Thanks, Donald Trump. That was all him, by the way. He campaigned on lowering the debt, and he didn't do it. So that is unacceptable. Now, the Republicans make a lot of noise about reducing debt and cutting spending, but they do not do it. And far too many of them are adamant about foreign intervention in wars and going overseas and meddling with people's you know, countries and replacing leadership in those countries that were duly elected, and that's not acceptable. So both parties, both of the main political parties, are crap, basically. And the only people who are talking about ending all of that are the libertarians. And there is a particular group of people in the libertarian party called the Mises Caucus. And I'd like to ask you to support them today. I cannot. I'm a Canadian. I'm not allowed to donate to this party, but... These people have done a lot to give us even the little bit of freedom that we have today, and they're, they're pushing back against the encroachment of government hands on, on your legitimately earned business earnings. And it's important that you know we as entrepreneurs start looking into this political situation. We can't just ignore this. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. And it doesn't matter if Republicans get elected again. Donald Trump probably will be elected again. That's not going to save anybody. It's, it's going to slow down the rate of decline by a small margin. But the day is coming when the whole thing is going to basically fold in on itself. And we need to at least try and push back against that. So uh, there's going to be a link in the description. Go and have a look at the Libertarian Party and join up through the Mises Caucus and support those guys. They're working very hard. Many of them are working for free. And they're just like 24 hours a day. They're just fighting against, you know, these wars, the the federal regulation, the drug war. The prohibition of drugs has killed more people in North America than any terrorist attack ever will. Um if you want to know why South America is basically a flaming garbage can, and I'm not saying that that it's a, you know the people there are garbage, but it's a you know it's a terrible situation there, and it's a lot of that is due to the drug war, which has produced the cartels. As you probably, if you're a student in history, you'll know that in the 20s, alcohol prohibition produced all of these gangsters like uh, I was going to say Al Gore. <laughs> Al Capone, although Al Gore is a bit of a gangster, he wants to he wants to raid your bank account too. Uh, but Al Capone, you know, he was a famous bootlegger, and uh, those guys were a direct result of the prohibition of alcohol. And when prohibition ended, all of these these gangs, these bootlegging gangs, vanished. So have a link. Have a look at the link in the description. Consider you know joining. If you're an American, you have to be an American. You have to be a legal, I believe you have to be at least a resident. Uh, so I can't do it. But I said to Michael Heiss, who is the guy who launched this group of people, I said, I'm going to promote you on the podcast, man. I can't contribute, but I can do something. So have a look at that. It's in our best interest to do this. We need to fight against this. We can't ignore it. So with that, let's get into the main topic of today, which is customer service. So you should be, I mean, these are the good times. It's kind of like being, you know, I don't want to say high, but it's almost like you're, you got this endorphin high because all the sales are popping in 
And, you know, looking at my Amazon screen, it's just like this giant spike. Everything's looking beautiful. But this is just the beginning of, this is the middle phase. If you remember a couple of weeks ago, I told you about the three phases of shopping. So we're past the pre-shopping phase. People are now like really looking for that perfect Christmas present. So I already told you, keep listing. But you're going to start getting more customer messages and probably 90% of them are going to be on Etsy. And for me, it's actually pretty quiet for me on Etsy this year. So I'm not getting the massive flood of messages that I did last year, but it's coming and I'm going to tell you what messages you're going to get and how to respond to those messages. So first of all, let's talk about eight points for handling customers. Don't worry, all of these points are going to be in the show notes. So make sure you have a look at those show notes so you can remind yourself of what I've said today. So this is basically how to handle customers for newbies, how to turn that Karen into a Grace, which is a way of saying how to turn someone who is a snotty and kind of unreasonable person into somebody who is appreciative and um, will give you a good review or at least will not give you a bad review and demand a refund or something like that. So the number one thing, let's start with this. Make sure that you have your shipping times clearly posted and your return policies are also available, at least on Etsy. Amazon, um, your handling time is basically your the only thing you need to worry about. As long as you've got that 10 to 14 days in your handling time, you should be okay. Um, you really do need that though because... You just do not want to have late shipments on Amazon. It is very bad for your account. Even if you don't get suspended, it just, you know, it. I don't know if it drops your, your rankings, but it does not help you in any way. So I've done quite well this year. I have maintained a 100% on-time shipping rate. That is, everything that I'm selling that isn't already at Amazon, you know, the print-on-demand, they're all shipping on time. So the customers, when they see on Amazon your listing, they will see the estimated arrival date based on that shipping time. There's nothing you can do about that. However, that doesn't really stop people from buying. In fact, you will have people buying on Amazon all the way up until the day before Christmas. And most of those people, like 99% of those people, they know they're not going to get their product in time. And they're okay with that. It's not like we're selling, you know, giant expensive gifts. These are like add-on gifts or gifts for coworkers. So a lot of people, if they're on Christmas vacation or something, they're going to buy a gift for their boss or their coworkers and they'll give it to them in the new year. Totally fine. So when you start seeing those those orders and you're like, well, I know that's not going to arrive in time, don't worry about that, okay? It's not your problem to worry about that. A lot of new sellers... They see those last-minute sales and they think, oh, should I cancel that? It's not going to arrive in time. Don't assume what your customer is thinking. Just make sure that you have your handling times clearly posted. So on Etsy, you go into your shipping details. Let me get to my Etsy screen and I'll tell you exactly where you're going. So you're going into your settings. You're going into your shipping settings. And... uh, You're going to, uh, no, uh, maybe not be it. So (laughs) shipping profiles, yes, that is it. So you go into your shipping profiles and you're going to edit whatever shipping profile you're using and you're going to raise that to one to two weeks handling time. So do that now before it's too late. On Etsy, it's not really that big of a deal. In fact, I'm finding that Almost everything I'm selling on Etsy is shipping within, like, still shipping within five days, which is phenomenal. Um, The warehouses and suppliers that I'm using, Custom Happy, is just doing an astonishingly good job this year. They are doing fantastic. I have not had any of the problems that I had last year. So what I had last year was I would, you know, sometimes um, orders wouldn't get picked up through the integration Um, Sometimes the wrong item was being sent, and sometimes 
items were getting missed or the the tracking number wasn't being put in on time. So it wasn't too frequent, but it was enough that it I had to sit there and kind of fiddle with things and sort of keep an eye on things. This year, it's almost been, and I hate to say this, it's almost been like I've just not even been working. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I've done about a third of the amount of actual work this year, like customer service work, as I did last year. So it is fantastic. And, you know, thank you to Rachel Raffay, owner of Custom Happy, Don Wilson, owner of Gear Bubble. Those are my two main suppliers. They have done a fantastic job of getting the, the handling times down to a insanely low level. So if you've ever been on the fence about whether Gear Bubble and all of the suppliers that they use are good, like you just need to know that they've they they work hard on on getting better every year and they are. So let's go back here to so we've covered shipping times, make sure those are posted and your return policies on Etsy. So you can decide whether you will accept returns on Etsy. Amazon, you don't get to decide that. You will accept returns on Amazon whether you want to or not. You will get some returns. Whether you are selling the FBA products or you are just doing the print-on-demand, you don't have enough money to send in any FBA yet, you will get a return, you will get some cancellations. You have to honor those, but that's okay. Um, So basically the guideline is this. If somebody wants to cancel and it hasn't shipped, then you can cancel. You just email your supplier and say, this order needs to be canceled. Now, they might say that we can't cancel it. That's okay, too. You just message the customer back and you say, unfortunately, the item is shipping in the next 24 hours. You know, if it's whether it is or not, just say that because it probably is. And we cannot cancel it. However, you may return the item and you won't be, you know, when it gets returned, you'll receive a refund because Amazon promises that to customers. So... Most customers, I have yet to have anybody be upset by that. Most of them, what they'll do is they'll open up that return. And then you approve it, and then you wait. If they get the item and they're like, okay, I'm sending it back, then they send it back. And then when it gets returned to you, you refund their money. That's it. And now you have a mug that you don't want. (laughs) So, um, yeah. Basically, you know, if you spend enough time doing this, you're going to end up with a whole bunch of not a whole bunch, but like three or four items that has gotten returned to you by customers. So what I do, because I live in Canada, they're not going to ship that to me directly. So they, I have it shipped to what's called a, a forwarding service. It's basically a, a company that's right on the border of Canada and the U.S. And they receive that for me, and then I have to pay them to send it to me directly. So basically the only reason I'm that I'm doing that is because I want actually to have those items because then I can sort of know that, you know, I, I just nice to have one of your items that you've made in your hands every now and then, and I'll give them away to people. So it does cost me a, a bunch more though. In many cases, the cost of shipping it over the border is like $18, which is stupid expensive, but I've done it a few times. All right. So Number two point, and I have to emphasize this, listen to what I'm about to tell you and absorb it into your pink uh, fluffy matter inside your head. Do not promise anything that you cannot personally deliver. And I'm referring to, will this arrive in time for Christmas? You are going to get that question starting probably today I mean, if you haven't already been getting that question, you're going to get that question. And they're going to ask you, will this arrive by Christmas? And it's only what? It's the sixth today. It is, it seems like a long time till Christmas. However, you are not personally delivering that item and you have no idea whether it will arrive or not. And particularly for Canada, um, overseas, it's almost a guarantee it's not going to arrive in time because Canada Post sucks and they don't track packages. And uh, overseas, obviously, I mean, it's not teleporting over there, so it has to be flown or 
you know, delivered by uh, some guy in a boat, you know, driving really fast over the water. It's going to take some time. And then it has to go through customs once it arrives there. So I've had a few questions. Will this arrive in... I had somebody ask me, will this arrive in time in Moldovia? And I was like, Moldovia? Is that a place? I thought that was like a a movie. So yeah, it is a place. And no, it probably won't get there in time for Christmas. So I had to tell the lady and she was like, okay, thank you for being honest. And that's what you're going to get. People appreciate honesty. Now for anybody ordering in the United States, it is very likely that if they order today, their item will arrive by Christmas. And in fact, a lot of suppliers put down a guaranteed delivery date. Do not pay attention to someone else's guarantee. Someone else's guarantee will fail. You put your own guarantees if you're comfortable doing it. Personally, I'm not comfortable guaranteeing anything. I guarantee that this item will arrive intact. And it will be amazing. Whoever you give this gift to is going to fall over and start bawling their eyes out. That's how good this gift is. You know, they're going to put it on their shelf And your picture will be next to it. They're going to put a framed picture of you next to this coffee mug because they love you so much. Now, whether it arrives in time, I don't know. I think it will. So that's what I say, except for that flowery bit about, you know, the I'm just having a little fun there. But what I usually say when someone says, will this arrive in time by Christmas? I say, I think it very, very, very likely will. Unfortunately, I can't guarantee it because I don't have control over the shipping, but I think it will. And you wouldn't believe that this is actually pretty okay for many, many, most people. Uh, If you you have one person out of 10 cancel because of this, that would be a pretty high number of cancellations. And you can also, on Etsy, when I'm talking about cancellations, you can actually refuse to cancel an order. I know several people who just straight up refuse to cancel orders. You order it, it's coming. And they have made exceptions. I think uh, I'll call her Mrs. H. She's a good friend. She's a top seller, very good. Love to have her on the podcast if she'll come on. But she shared one time that she was willing to cancel an order because the guy had broken up with his girlfriend after he had ordered a special coffee mug for her. And she was like, okay, I feel bad for you. I'll cancel it for you. But otherwise, she's like, I don't cancel. My heart is black and cold. And if you order it, it's coming. You're going to pay for it. And you're going to love it because it's a great product, but you can't cancel. However, I have been usually pretty willing to to cancel. If, you know, somebody the next day says, I want to cancel this, whatever. That's fine. I'll cancel it for you. I don't get too excited about that because sometimes if you don't cancel, (laughs) people might be like, well, I'm just going to leave a bad review for you. So I don't know. It doesn't cost me anything to cancel it. When somebody says, I want to return this, that's when I say negative, negative Ghost Rider. There is no returns. These are all handmade, especially custom items. No returns will be accepted. So if it's broken... If it's defective, I will replace it, and I'll refund your money. But if you just don't like it because, you know, you thought you liked Donald Trump and you turned out you didn't, well, sorry. But often, you will not get that. That's not, that's very uncommon. All right, so point three, when you get, and I say when, because it's going to happen, even if it doesn't happen this year, if it's your first year, you probably won't get this. Maybe you will. It's like a like a one in three chance you'll get this. But you might get a crazy, demanding, and a very unreasonable person. All right? So this is how you deal with that. So let me give you an example of a crazy, demanding, and an unreasonable person. So somebody messages you, and they're trying, you know, let's say that they're like, okay, I want this to say this, and I want you know, this font up there, and they're trying to create this perfect custom order and get you to like redesign everything. 
and you're like, at first you're like, okay, sure, I'll work with you. I'll create a design that you like. And then you show them what the design's going to look like. And they're like, no, 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 that looks terrible. So they redesign it. And then you, you know, because you've already spent a little time doing this, you're like, well, I kind of want to continue with this. So you rework it. And let's say you do that twice and they finally like it. Then they're like, I need this by the 20th. And you're like, I, I can't do that. It's just not going to be, I can't guarantee it. And, and they're like, well, I, want, I need it by then. Well, that's an unreasonable person. Then you're going to get these people who message you because the item didn't arrive on the very day that they expected it to arrive. And they'll say, uh, you have ruined my Christmas. You have ruined my Christmas. I'm not kidding you. There are some people out there that if they don't get that coffee mug with a picture of a cat on it in time for Christmas, they are going to die. Like they are going to fall over and their spirits will leave their bodies because you have ruined the world for them. The Holocaust was nothing. My coffee mug was late. The world is on fire. All right? It's bad. And they will be so dramatic that you, you just, you will roll your eyes into the back of your head. Your eyeballs will be rotating like, you know, the moon. No, maybe like a quasar star. And you will be like, you Madame, sir, zir, are an idiot. That will be what you think. Do not get sucked into these long conversations about anything. Stand by your policies. Create policies that you are comfortable with. When you see somebody out there that looks like they're going to be a lot of work, it is absolutely reasonable for you to, to, to be like, I'm sorry, I can't help you. If somebody orders something and, it, and you're like, you know what? This person is probably not going to be happy with anything that I do. It is very reasonable to refund their money, cancel the order, and then block them. You can't do this on Amazon, but it's less likely that you're going to find this person on Amazon who's going to do this to you. Not completely unlikely. And I'll share my story of 2018 with you at the end of this podcast. But it is fine. To, to refuse to, to work with somebody who is unreasonable. But what I recommend you don't do, don't get sucked into these long debates about this and that. Be like, I'm sorry, I regret that I couldn't help you. Thank you for your time. I'm going to have to cut this off. Cut off the, the conversation. Always be professional. You know, think of yourself as being like, you know, if you've ever seen pictures of protests, and you got these angry protesters screaming at the wall of police officers. And they're like, you know, like, like screaming in the face of these officers. And the officers are just standing there serenely staring into space, probably contemplating, you know, where they're going to go for lunch after this. That's who you want to be. You want to be just serene, calm, cool, but stand by your policies. Point number four, sometimes a refund will solve a problem, even if it's not your fault. So I am going to tell you my story here. I had someone last year order a custom coffee mug um, on a listing that the only custom listing that actually ever sold for me really well, but it sold a lot. So, so this lady, she was, um, something went really weird. It was an Amazon order. The item was shipped and delivered to her post office, and then apparently it was destroyed. And I was like, well, that's weird. So the woman messaged me, and she was like, what did you do? How did you ship this? This is all your fault. And at first, I said, this is not my fault. I did everything I'm supposed to do, which was true. Now, she had already left me a one-star review, and I was like, okay, well... Thank you for doing that. Sarcastically, thank you. So I, I got sucked into a little bit of a, and I, I wasn't being snarky, but I, at first I was just being like stubborn about this. So I ended up res resending the item at my own expense 
from a different supplier. So I sent it from Printful because at that time they were offering a shipping upgrade that was like super fast. So I paid my own money, you know, to resend this item, I gave her a refund on Amazon, and I was like, all right. I apologize for the for the issue here. So please know that you've got the, the item coming to you. So Christmas Day, I woke up to a message from her, and she said, you've ruined my Christmas because it didn't arrive in time. And I was like, you are a terrible person. I sent this to you at my own expense. And so basically I was like, it will get there. Don't message me. No, I didn't say that. But I was like, you messaged me on Christmas Day about this? Do you think, what do you think I am? Some kind of robot, you know, th- sitting in my office? It's Christmas Day. So despite all of that, that was the only person who was really that unreasonable. And sometimes you're going to get these people and there's just nothing that you can do to please them. So you don't have to go over the moon to do it. Do the very best you can. If you get a one-star review, you can always respond to it. So responding to reviews is when you go on to your reviews on Amazon or Etsy, you see a bad review, you can respond to it, and you say, uh, customer was refunded, proper item sent, thank you. That's it. Everybody knows you're going to get bad reviews. You're not going to get all five-star reviews, but the goal is to get enough of them that all of the bad ones just get buried underneath, if you get any bad ones at all. I have never had a problem with this. I get reviews from time to time. I never chase them down. Uh, they just they just come. You'll get reviews, and you know you'll get mostly five star reviews. That's good. People will appreciate the product because it's good quality products. All right. So <clears throat> sometimes a refund will solve a problem, even if it's not your fault, and you might get a nice review out of it. So again, like if somebody says, "I need to cancel," "I need to do this," and you're like, "Oh well, I don't. I can't do that. That's going to cost me money." It's like, well. You know, you got to decide if you're going to go a little bit further to solve this problem. And sometimes people will be very appreciative of that. Now, doing it all the time probably is not a great idea because, well, you know, just, just be use your discretion. You have to decide what you're willing to do. And I've done it before, and I have no problem doing it. You know, I make enough money out of this that a couple of people, if they, if something happens and I got to, you know, refund and resend at my own expense, I'll do it, even if it wasn't my fault. All right, so number five, custom requests. You get someone who is like, hey, can you change the color of this font? You make it uh, this this font, the dog-looking font. Um, charge them more money for that kind of order. Do not charge them whatever your base rate is, which should be about 20 bucks. Charge them $25. Your time is worth money. Don't work for free. Besides, when people come to expect paying more for custom requests, then we all benefit, right? So point number six, be prepared within the next week here to get a crap load of messages asking about the tracking info for their package. So here's the problem that Etsy has. They do not update or even in some cases, they don't even give the customer the tracking number. So Etsy will send a, an email to the customer. It's like, hey, your package has shipped. Click here to track your package. And it'll just, it'll lead to nothing. So to avoid that, um, no, you can't avoid that. So, sorry. Um, that's just how Etsy works. That's a, they're not really built around our tracking system. You know, when you, it doesn't matter who you ship from. Um, Etsy will only track the packages, basically, that you shipped through the Etsy um, shipping service. So if you're, let's say that you're at home and you make necklaces, and then you buy a shipping label from Etsy, Etsy will track that just fine. But they will not track packages from anyone else. So you're going to get people who are like, how do I track this package? This package doesn't exist or something like that. 
So what I do is I just, I send them a message right away and I say, I apologize for that. This is your tracking number and here is a link to track it. I always give people both the tracking number and the link. And I always use the DHL e-commerce link instead of the USPS link because how the shipping works for anything sent by Gearbubble and in fact a lot of other uh, shipping you know, suppliers is that it, one company will you know, do all the initial work, they'll collate the packages, get them shipped to the city that they're going to be going to, and then the United States Postal Service will deliver the package. It's called last mile shipping. It's complicated. I don't really know exactly how it works. It's just, it does work. The items get there. I don't care how they get there. You know, some guy shows up and puts it on your desk or on your doorstep or flings it through your window. I don't know. It makes it there. So that's called last mile. <clears throat> and it can be complicated to track that. So take the time, give your customer the shipping, uh, the tracking number and a link to track it. You can find that tracking number by, or sorry, you can get a link by posting or pasting that tracking number into Google search or any search and just search that number. It'll come right up. All right. So I'm going to make the rest of this quick because I'm losing my voice. Uh, All right. Sometimes people will have items stolen by trolls, orcs, and terrible human beings. But most of the time, a stolen item is actually just misplaced. So this happens quite a bit for um, like apartment buildings or condos where, you know, people are living kind of close together. Somebody will grab someone else's package. So what I tell people, go talk to your neighbors, talk to your family. Somebody's got the package very likely. If you don't find it, come back to me. We'll get it sorted out. So that's that's an easy way to kind of defer that. A lot of the time, people will end up finding it. And a lot of the times, they'll be actually very angry about this. They'll be like, it didn't arrive. And you'll be like, okay, these are some solutions. You know, go ask your family. This is very common. You know, just reassure them that it could be somewhere. And then sometimes they will sheepishly message you back and say, oh, my husband had it. Sorry about that. Or they just won't message you back at all because they're embarrassed. And that's fine. So, um, yeah. Now, the last thing I'll say is if you screw up, own your mistake and make it right immediately. No one else is going to make it right for you. So, um, I may post some message templates in the show notes if I have time here today. And uh, there's just some ideas for you to message your customers back, ways to deal with certain things things you can say to kind of soothe your customer's feelings and sort of massage their ego and let them know that they are valuable to you and that you care about their entire lives. You want to be the godfather of their children. Well, not really, but, you know, at least you care about getting them the item that you ordered. So with that, guys, I'm going to leave you. Please have a great Christmas. Um, And... The next two episodes that come out are going to be a review of my business here. Do not miss those episodes. They're going to be valuable. You know, uh, they're probably going to be the most valuable of the year because I'm going to be telling you what I did wrong this year and how I plan to improve. So check that out. Probably be releasing those over the Christmas break. Uh, With that, cheers.